previews under the hood video, we spent some time developing a valuable insight that complexity in data represents knowledge to be extracted. We looked at an example of a web application that exhibits this as it evolves over time, and we identified a few friction points. What remains to be seen is how the graph data model solves these problems and how Neo4j is an ideal implementation of these solutions. We should address the question of schemas first. We talked about schemas in our example when we expanded our sources of data to include new user interactions. In relational databases, schemas are ever-present and affect the entire application stack from domain modeling decisions to queries to administrative operations. We have already talked about data models and how they affect our application, and relational schemas are a prime example of this. Let's use the framework we have developed and examine schemas as a means of managing complexity. Since their introduction 40 years ago, relational databases have had to use schema as their way of managing knowledge. At the time, it was necessary for systems to know as much as possible ahead of time about the data it was asked to store, so it can make proper use of the hardware as well as properly plan and optimize queries. Tables needed to be explicitly listed in queries, effectively forcing any change in the database to propagate to every part of the application, pushing complexity from the database to the user. We can demonstrate this using our example web app. If you recall, we started by having a single interaction of users purchasing products, and we wanted to find connections between users with common purchases. In both relational and graph data models, this is a straightforward query to write. But watch what happens when we expand our applications to include comments. In a schema-based database, all queries that search for connections between users need to be made aware of the new way users can relate. The knowledge the new entities introduced is not managed by the, by the database, but instead the burden is put on the application through the queries. In contrast, in a graph model, the new entity represents just another path that users can connect with each other. The query remains unchanged and the complexity of managing the data is hidden, leaving us with the power of a new type of connection without complicating our user experience. Let's take a closer look at what we just said. Schema is the way through which relational databases force us to deal with complexity. But is it the root problem? If we were developing an application that only generated reports by looking at purchases, then a rigid schema would not be a problem. In fact, a relational system would be very well suited for this task, because it would allow us to focus on only the part of the data that we care about. The problems arise from the desire to freely explore connections between all possible entities. The relational model doesn't have a concept of paths between entities. It is the application developer that needs to keep in mind all possible connections that exist in the domain, and they need to recreate them through the queries every time. In contrast, a graph data model maintains the full set of connections between entities and makes their existence available to the user without the need for explicit planning. The absence of rigid schema in Neo4j is simply because Neo4j doesn't need schema to help it efficiently access data. Those of you that are familiar with database normalization theory should be able to recognize some familiarities here in how the graph data model is in effect a very denormalized data model. Neo4j is built around this idea at its core taking advantage of all the knowledge developed from query optimization in relational systems and bringing it into a denormalized, schema-free system. It can be tempting to say that the answer to all scalability problems is to denormalize everything and forget about schemas. However, let's remember 
the reasons that relational databases required schema in the first place. There are a lot of optimizations that schema allow, and losing those would make a graph system impossible to scale. As an example, consider path traversals. If you ask the system to find all the connections between two entities, then the lack of schema means that there are no constraints known beforehand that can limit the size of the query. In effect, the system needs to deal with an unbound data set and result set. This problem is inherent to the graph model, but is absent from the relational or document models. In practice, this means that transaction sizes in a graph database can be arbitrarily large and typically run in the hundreds of megabytes for moderately complicated queries. Building a graph database that deals with this problem takes a lot of time and effort, requiring the development of proper memory management for this type of workload, smart use of parallelism through graph-aware query planning, and a lot more. Neo4j has solved all these problems, and we allow you to take full advantage of the properties of the graph data model in a native way, letting you focus on what matters, putting your data to work by extracting all the knowledge it contains without getting bogged down by either schema or the problems that can arise in less mature schemaless solutions. Though going into the details of how Neo4j innovates around the technical challenges of scaling the graph data model is a very interesting topic, it lies outside the scope of the series. We have covered what complexity is and how to deal with it. So now it's time we turn our attention to what we can do with our newfound knowledge. So join me next time when we look at graph composition and how a seemingly simple operation can open a door to a new way of thinking about data. <laughs>